Jesus Christ is the same as the day today and forever. The Jesus of the Bible is the Jesus of today. He still works miracles, saves, heals and delivers. This simple message inspires faith to receive miracle healing from Jesus. All right. Let's turn our Bibles please. I just want us to go to Psalm 107. We'll read verse 2 and then we're going to make our declaration together. Psalm 107. and verse 2 The Bible says here I'll read verses 1 and 2 Psalm 107 Oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever Let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy The Bible is telling us is encouraging us is saying let the redeemed of a lord say so. You declare God is good his mercies are endure, endures forever his goodness on your life on my life endures forever but then as uh, as an outcome as a result it's saying say so. You declare what the lord has done for you let the redeemed of the lord say so. So our declaration of God's redeeming work in our lives is not only an acknowledgement of his goodness which was stated for us in verse 1 you know oh give thanks to the lord for he is good his mercy and just forever so when you say so you're expressing your thankfulness you're expressing your gratitude to the lord but our expression of redemption of what the lord has done for us is also a weapon against the enemy so it works both ways When you declare what God has done for you in your life and redeeming you, you are expressing gratitude and uh, recognition of the goodness of God in your life. But you are also, but that is also a powerful weapon against the enemy. You are announcing to the enemy that you are the redeemed of the Lord. That Satan has no right over you, no place in you, no access in you, no a claim over you you are the redeemed of the lord let the redeemed of the lord say so that means you say what god has done for you in your life amen and that's what we're going to do right now as we stand up to make our declaration we are saying what god has done for us in our lives we are saying it in one way we're expressing gratitude to the lord but we're also releasing it as a weapon against the enemy so please let's rise up to our feet this morning let's make our declaration let's say it out loud bold and strong if you brought your bible uh then i encourage you to hold it out high up in the air and let's say this out loud bold and strong together this is god's word this is god speaking to me i am who god says i am I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. I believe his word and I live by his word. Christ is my master. And to him I am in absolute surrender. I present myself as a new wine skin to receive new wine and fresh oil being poured out on me. God releases new things and a new work. of his spirit in me and through me in Jesus name amen god bless you, you may be seated please thank you today i uh, just a little reminder please keep your face masks on while uh, all of us uh, while we are inside the auditorium covering your nose and mouth and uh it's part of our guidelines precautions for ourselves and others so please do that uh Uh, during this service thank you today is a supernatural sunday what we do the last sunday what we've been doing at the last sunday of the month uh, we set it aside as a supernatural sunday just uh, a time for us to come together and expect god to 
do things, do wonderful miracles in our lives. doesn't mean that God doesn't work the other days. It's just that that particular Sunday, we keep it geared towards that. We teach and preach along those lines. Uh, and then we pray together for those kinds of things to happen. So that's what we are going to do this morning as I bring a very simple message from God's word. Uh, just to inspire faith in our hearts. And then we're going to pray together for miracles. And those of you watching online, wherever you are, uh, expect God to do wonderful things. Uh, before we get into the message, I just want to read out a testimony that came in this week. Um, the person who sent us this testimony, you know, gave us permission to share that, so I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to just read this testimony. As it came by email, so I'm just going to read it verbatim uh, as it was in the email. So the subject of this testimony, go, this was on the 25th of November is when we received it. Uh, my testimony, COVID battle won by the word of the Lord, was the subject of the email. Uh, so he writes, from the steps of death to the gates of life. Life can be so uncertain, so fickle, so unknown at any time. It can turn topsy-turvy. For us Christians sometimes, or most of the times, it is the evil one sifting us. On October 27th, on a slight fever, I called in a home COVID test and tested positive. As usual with everyone's advice, I settled for home quarantine and all was reasonably okay for eight days with vital readings normal. On, the, on November 3rd night, around 3 a.m., I got up breathless and just used my oximeter to check oxygen levels and to my dismay, it started falling from 90 to about 85. This was dangerous and I was really scared. I did not know what to do and decided to sleep it off and rechecked at 6 a.m. and again it was dangerously low. So it says I called BBMP and selected Baptist Hospital and uh, sorry I should mention the name of the hospital. Ba selected a hospital and requested an ambulance. Uh, that you know after two hours it came. Finally at 8 a.m. a hospital ambulance with PPE kit dr driver reached home. I packed bags alone and got into the ambulance alone and realized that this is a disease where you cannot have anyone with you. I reached hospital and was wheeled into the COVID ward and put on regular oxygen support. I was okay for two days, but on the 7th of November, on administering a drug, there seemed to be a reaction and my heart rate dropped to very low levels and I was wheeled into the ICU in a hurry. Those initial days in the ICU was very fearful as doctors were planning to intubate me, put me on a ventilator, uh, planning me to shifting me to a hospital in Velo. Uh, I was listening to all this, not knowing what to do. The Lord Jesus somehow kept me calm and always was asked this question by the Holy Spirit. Uh, he called you out of sin at age 34, placed so much of love and care into your life, gave you wealth, power, influence, and a heart for ministry, will not leave anything unfinished. He is a complete God and he will fulfill everything he has called out to fruition. This kept coming back to me at a point that I realized, kept coming back to me to a point that I realized I did not cry, I did not think of death, I did not even think of speaking about anything that will change the status quo. The reading the first three days were dangerously low. I says, uh, Pastor Ashes kept sending me uh, the word as voice messages. Many other men of God sent me the word. But on the fourth day in ICU, Romans 8.11 came to me by an audio message by Pastor. This verse blew my mind that the Holy Spirit, whose power raised Jesus from the dead, is in our bodies and will give life to our mortal bodies. Amazing. That moment I knew I won the victory in the name of Jesus. Every reading on the monitors improved drastically after that. I was able to sit up and eat food. Oxygen support was slowly reduced and I was doing well. Romans 8.11 became medicine to my body. This is true and believable. It happened in my life. Every word that is in the Bible is life-giving. Three days from that day of deliverance, I was discharged from the ICU to the ward with a lot of prayers from everyone and a huge contingent of doctors from across the nation were working, planning on my behalf. The Lord spoke to me in the ICU, key pointers in the life ahead to refocus on the unreached, especially the 1040 window, uh, to raise up you know, 100 crores for the task, to spend next two decades on the mission, agent, mission alongside my work. Today, after 14 days in hospital, everything is normal. I'm back home and my, my first checkup shows miraculous improvement. On my first checkup, a week after discharge, the doctor treating me told me this, amazing to see you in the OPD when just last week you were serious in the ICU. 
It's a miracle, Mr. Matthew. My testimony for those whom the devil is sifting, for whom the disease and sickness is scourging their bodies, remember, Jesus is true. He is the healer. His word is the medicine for our life. Truly, Jesus has come to give us life and life abundantly. At 49, my life has been saved from the steps of death. Every breath is now credited to my Lord Jesus. Every breath. Amen. 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 Thank God for what he's done in his life. Uh, just amazing how the word of God can build faith, uh, remove all uh, fear, anxiety, and then administer healing. It's God's word. Amen. And uh, that one word, just held on to that, Romans 8, 11. The spirit who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in us and he quickens our mortal body. And he saw a turnaround in what was happening in his body. Amen. I want to read just a portion of scripture for us and then just share a few thoughts, a few insights. And then we're going to pray and believe God uh, to do wonderful things in our lives. His word is powerful. I want to read for us from Mark chapter 2, just one of the many miracles that Jesus did. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. And again, he entered Capernaum after many days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. One of the Important things about our faith in, the, in Jesus Christ and our faith in the Bible is that our God is a supernatural, miracle-working God. We believe in that. We believe that God will work miracles in our lives, that God still works miracles. The days of miracles are not over. The God of the Bible is still the God who he said he is. He still intervenes in our life situations, into our circumstances. He still turns things around. He still heals. He still gives sight to the blind, makes the lame walk, the deaf hear. He heals people of cancer. He heals people of all kinds of sicknesses, diseases. He's still the miracle working God. He still intervenes in our life situations and turns things around. That's something that we believe as people who believe in Jesus and who read the word of God. And one of the things the Bible tells us about Jesus is this. It's a very simple statement, but it's so powerful. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and for ever. That means the Jesus of the Bible is still the Jesus of today. That Jesus has not changed. Every miracle that we see him do in the Bible and much more 
is still what he does today. He still continues to work miracles in the lives of people. He has not changed. He is not present here in the physical. But that does not matter. He is glorified. He is seated on the throne. He has conquered sin, Satan, sickness, death. He has defeated our enemy. And he is seated in the throne with all glory and honor. And we believe that Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He is still the way, the truth, and the life. He is still the miracle worker, the healer, the deliverer. The bondage breaker. The way maker. We could go on with this. He, we believe in who Jesus Christ is. Amen. And so what we understand from the scriptures is that when you and I go to him the same way people in the Bible came to him. That we can have the same results they had in Bible times. Some people want to discredit the word of God. You know, that's an ancient book. It's 2,000 years old. All the stories that you're reading, they are 2,000 years old. It is true, they are 2,000 years old. But the one who did the miracles never gets old. He is the great I am. He is the eternal one. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And that's why you and I, can, uh, we have this confidence that if we go to Jesus the same way that people did in Bible times, we will have the same results. Because faith in God is still the same. Faith today works the same exactly the way, the way it worked in Bible times. Faith has not changed. Times have changed and yes, it may be a little bit more difficult for you and me to have faith in God because we do have alternatives. We do have science. Science has advanced so much and technology and so many other things have advanced. The, the times in which we are living, of course, is very different from that of the Bible times. But faith in God works the same today as it did in Bible times. Amen? Faith in God works the same way. And so what I want to do this morning is just reference one miracle story that took place in the life and the ministry of Jesus. One miracle and just look, highlight a few insights from that miracle and then encourage you and me to reach out to Jesus the same way today. Or in whatever situation you're in, to reach out to Jesus and let him work a miracle in your life. We're going to talk about how we can receive miracle healing the way this man who was paralyzed received his healing. Now there are many details that are not recorded here in, in this narrative of, 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 of this, this healing of this paralyzed man. So just imagine a few things with me. This took place in a town called Capernaum. It was probably, it was Peter's hometown. Because as you read this story in the accounts of the Gospels, you find that uh, Jesus, uh, after he called Peter and Andrew, uh, he went and he ministered out of Peter's house. So the house that is referenced here in Mark 2 verse 1 is the house of Simon Peter. They lived in Capernaum, which was on the, uh, on, uh, it was actually a big lake, but they called it the Sea of uh, um, I can't forget the name now. Okay. It was a lake, but they called it a sea. So they, they, were, all, they were right there uh, you know, living by that. Capernaum was a small town in the northern part of Israel that was by the sea. So Peter and his brother and others were fishermen. Jesus called them. And after that, he ministered out of Peter's house. So imagine that in this town of Capernaum, there were five great friends. They were great friends. Something happened to one of them. Had some road accident, fell off a tree, something happened and he got paralyzed. Laid in bed. Now I'm just imagining this. Probably they were all 18 year olds, very naughty. <laughs> and they did something. And one of their friends became paralyzed. Lying in bed for some time. And the four friends had, you know, they had a lot of compassion for their dear friend, very close friends. So they would visit him often, do whatever they could to make him feel comfortable, let him know that they were still there for him. But he was paralyzed. He was bound to his bed and was destined to spend the rest of his life in that bed. 
But then suddenly they began to hear about a preacher. Jesus of Nazareth. He came from a different district called Judea. But he seemed to, now he was coming into Capernaum and uh, things were happening. They said that, you know, he would preach, healings were taking place, people were being delivered and so on. And so I'm just imagining these four friends said, let's go and look, uh, you know, look into this. So they probably arrived at Peter's house one day and they heard Jesus preach and they saw the miracles taking place. And they went back to their, they discussed among themselves, hey, maybe we should take our friend to one of those meetings of Jesus of Nazareth. So they waited for the next time they heard that Jesus was coming into Capernaum. And so when they heard that Jesus had come into Peter's house, that's where he ministered from, they said, now's our chance. And they had, by that time, they had convinced their friend that they needed to go to Jesus. So they had told him, look, we have seen these miracles. Jesus is truly the healer. He's, he's still telling us wonderful things about the kingdom of God. We're going to take you there. Is it okay? And they, he agreed. So you can imagine this particular day when Jesus is preaching in Peter's house and the house is crowded. Uh, many people are there. And these four friends carry their paralyzed friend and they come to this house. But this house is overflowing. There are people all outside, crowded, no way to get in. But we know what they did. They said, look, we are going to get our friend to Jesus because we know that Jesus will heal our friend. So they you know, got onto the roof, made a way through the tiled roof, let down their friend. And the Bible tells us this. Jesus saw their faith. So the first insight you and I must, I must understand that, that we draw from this story is this, that God sees our faith. If there's one thing that you can be sure that will get the attention of God, it is your faith. It's not your grumbling. It's not your complaining. It's not your arguing with God. It's not your, oh God, see me. I'm in such a poor state. It's not that. The one thing that does get the attention of God is your faith. It's faith in our hearts that will get the attention of God. Sometimes, you know, we get into a little pity party and say, God, you know, I've been suffering like this. I've been like this. God, I'm such a good Christian. I'm such a devout person. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Listen, there's one thing that does get the attention of God. It's faith in your heart and mine. And some things that we can learn about faith from the story is this, that faith has expectation. These five friends, four of them carrying the, their fifth friend, they came with expectation. Faith has determination. They were not going to be deterred by the fact that this house was packed and overflowing. They didn't go back. Sometimes we give up very easily. We said, maybe today is not our day. The house is too crowded. Maybe today is not our day. It's so difficult to go there. They didn't let anything deter their faith. Faith is expectant. Faith is determined to get to Jesus, to get to God. Are you understanding that? That that's the kind of faith that gets the attention of God. An expectant faith, a determined faith saying, God, I'm determined that my situation will change by heaven's intervention. I am determined that my body will be healed by your touch. I am determined, God, that my circumstance, my situation is not too hard for you. And it will change because you are my God and I'm in covenant with you. That's determination. That, that comes from solid faith. And that's the kind of faith get, that gets the attention of God. We must understand that God is not obligated to respond to our need. God is not obligated to respond to our pain. If God responded to needs, everybody's need would be met. If God responded to pain, everybody's pain would be taken care of. But God responds to faith in our hearts. Are you listening? Jesus saw their faith. An expectant faith. A determined faith. And faith is always rewarded by God. They got what they came for. Amen. Amen. And so here you can imagine this with me. As they let their friend down before Jesus. They've come for healing. But Jesus is saying something different. 
Jesus says to this man lying in this bed paralyzed, he says, son, your sins are forgiven. And you can imagine, that was not what they were expecting Jesus to say. They came for healing. But he's dealing with something else. He's saying your sins are forgiven. Now of course, you know, the scribes, or, uh, the scholars, the religious people were sitting packed in that house. They began to discuss or they began to think about this. Hey, who is this man? We know he's a carpenter. How dare he forgive sins? Because forgiving sins is a work of God, not the work of a man. How could a man say, your sins are forgiven? So they're reasoning in their minds and probably talking amongst themselves. Only God can forgive sins. How dare this man speak like that? But here's the second insight that we must understand. That forgiveness paves the way for your healing. Forgiveness paves the way for your miracle. And this is, now Jesus healed in many, many different ways. He didn't follow a set pattern. He didn't follow a set formula. He healed in many different ways. And there were times when he healed people and then told them their sins were forgiven. But there is a point here that there are times when receiving forgiveness opens the door for the next miracle that you need. Whether it's healing for your body or an, an intervention in your life. Forgiveness is something God wants you to receive. And in this particular case, Jesus identified the importance of this man knowing that he is forgiven of his sins. You see, many times our sin or our our, our shame and guilt about the sin we've committed becomes an hindrance from us, for us from receiving healing from God. Our sense of condemnation, our sense of guilt and shame keeps us from going to God and saying, God heal, God deliver, God intervene. The Bible tells us, if our heart condemn us, then we have no confidence before God. So that condemnation that we feel keeps us from even asking God for healing. Asking God for deliverance. So I'm just imagining, although the Bible doesn't state this, that when this man was being carried to this house to be healed, there was probably one thing that hindered him from being convinced fully that Jesus would heal him. He said, what about the sins I've done in my youth? Would those sins block my healing? And for many of us Christians, for many of us people, that kind of a question actually hinders us from reaching out and receiving the healing that is available, from reaching out and receiving the miracle that's available. And that's why Jesus said, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Deal with the sin issue. The good news is that all of us can have our sins forgiven because Jesus Christ paid for all our sins on the cross. And it's just a simple matter of believing in Jesus Christ and saying, Lord, I believe you died for my sins. However big or small they may be, however few or many they may be, all my sins were paid for at Calvary's cross. And by believing in that, at that very instant, your sins will be forgiven because the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. And just having the assurance that our sins are forgiven opens the way now for you and me to confidently ask God for healing, for deliverance, for whatever miracle. Because very often, I'm repeating myself, that sense of condemnation hinders us from confidently receiving the healing or the miracle that we need. The good news is for all of us and for those of us watching online, it's the same message. Jesus Christ has already paid for all our sins on the cross. And all we need to do, one moment, Lord, I believe you paid for my sins. I'm forgiven. That sin issue is dealt with once and for all. It's out of the way. There is nothing that can stop you and me from receiving the miracle that we need. Whether it's healing in our bodies or an intervention in our life situations. Son, your sins are forgiven. And I can just imagine 
The moment this young man heard it and he needed to hear it. That's why Jesus spoke it. He never spoke an unnecessary word. The moment this young man on a stretcher heard the words from Jesus' mouth. Son, your sins are forgiven. He knew that moment. He didn't have to worry about any of the wrong that he thought would hinder him from receiving his miracle. It was gone. That sense of shame, guilt, condemnation was gone. He was ready now for his miracle. So insight number two. Receiving forgiveness often paves the way for your miracle. And receiving forgiveness is such a simple thing. Because Jesus Christ already paid for our sins. And the Bible says, Acts 10 verse 43, Whoever believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And so here these scribes are disputing, they're arguing in their minds, they're saying, how can this man forgive sins? Because only God can. And the Bible says that Jesus discerned inside his heart that this was what was going on amongst these Pharisees or these scribes who were sitting there. And so he asks them this question, what is more difficult to do? What is more difficult? To forgive sins or to heal? What's more difficult? And now you can think their computer is going faster now. What's more difficult? Forgive, heal. Forgive, heal. Only God forgives. Only God heals. Only God forgives. Only God heals. What's more difficult? Well, only God can do both. Only God can do both. Only God can forgive. Only God can heal. Only God can forgive. Only God can heal. And Jesus says, I want to make a point. I want you to know that I have authority not only to forgive, but also to heal. So here's a third insight that I want us to understand. That both forgiveness and healing come from the same source, comes from Jesus Christ. Jesus is God who saves and who heals. Jesus is the one who forgives. Jesus is the one who also heals. Jesus is the one who also works the miracle that you and I need. The same one who forgives is also the one who heals. And they understood this revelation in the Old Testament. That's why in Psalm 103 verse 3, he says, you know, bless the Lord, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases. One breath. The same God who forgives is the God who heals. The same faith that receives forgiveness also receives healing. Sometimes we think, Wow, it's so difficult to believe God for healing. Listen, when you believe God for forgiveness, it's the same faith that also receives healing from God. It's the same God heals and forgives. So the same faith in God receives forgiveness and healing. And that's what you and I must understand. That Jesus who forgives is also the Jesus who heals. And Jesus demonstrated that as he went around. The Bible says he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went around healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And he still does that today. He heals all who are oppressed of the devil. Whatever your sickness is, whatever your disease is, Jesus Christ is your healer. The way he raised the paralytics up and made them walk in an instant, the way he opened blind eyes, the way he unstopped deaf ears in Bible times, he still does those things today. He still heals miraculously. Are you with me? It's a little difficult for us to believe because we do have alternatives as I mentioned earlier. We can go to the doctor and we're not against going to the doctors. We're not against going to the hospitals. We're not against getting medical help. But I want us to understand that there are impossibilities even in medicine. And Jesus Christ is the miracle worker. The one for whom nothing is impossible. Amen. The same Jesus who forgives is also the Jesus who heals. He does both. And so Jesus looks at this young man. He says, rise, take up your bed and walk. 
Rise, take up your bed, and walk. His four friends are looking from there. This young man is looking back at his friends. Did you tell him what my condition was? Have you given him my medical report? Does he know that I am paralyzed? Does he know that in the last four years, I've not gotten out of this bed? He's telling me, rise, take up your bed, and walk. And he's trying to communicate to the four of them through his eyes. Tell him, I can't do it. But Jesus never speaks an unnecessary word. He says, rise, take up your bed, and walk. And I'm just imagining this. After this interaction with his friends on the roof, one of them speaks up and says, guy, just try something. Just try. Just try moving your hand. Okay. He tries. Maybe he tweaks his little finger. I'm just imagining. Or maybe he tries to wiggle his toes. He's never tried doing that last four years. Or however long he was paralyzed. But because Jesus said, Rise. Take up your bed. He's going to try. There's something important here. We said in the very beginning that faith gets our attention, gets God's attention. Faith is expectant. Faith is determined. But we must also learn something about faith. Faith is action. Faith is not theological argument. Faith is not doctrine. Faith is not having understanding. Faith is not having information. All of that encourages faith. But ultimately, faith comes down to this. Faith is action. The Bible says faith without works is dead. If you don't act your faith, if you don't do something with your faith, it's, it's unproductive. It can't do anything. The Bible also says, talking about Abraham, it says, look at Abraham. Through his works, faith was made perfect. Our faith is brought to a place of maturity. Our faith is brought to a place where it can produce when we do something with it. It says, by works, faith was made perfect. It was brought to maturity. It was brought to this place where it could produce. And so faith has to have works, action, corresponding action. You've got to do something. So I'm just trying to imagine this young man on that bed having heard. He's come all this way in faith. But now Jesus is saying, take your faith to the point where it can produce. Take your faith to the point where your faith can give you your reward. Can give you what you're looking for. Put your faith into action. Rise, take up your bed. Do something. What you couldn't do. And ask this young man. Begins to move his toe or his hand. At that moment, his faith produces. The power of God goes into work. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, the power of God rushes through, healing every damaged nerve or broken bone or whatever the cause of his paralysis was. The power of God makes him whole. And he begins to. He realize, I can move my hand. I can move my feet. He sits up on the edge of the bed. And then he lets himself down off the bed. And he looks at his friends and says, drop it. They drop the bed. He packs it and he walks. The, the Red Sea just parts. All the people just move out of the way. And he walks out with his mattress. He's never done it. But that day was his day. Amen. Faith is action. And when God sees you and me acting our faith, 
his power goes into motion. His power goes into operation. That's why the Bible tells us there in first, second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 11. It says that God completes our work of faith with his power. God fulfills. God completes our work of faith with his power. When you put your faith into action, the power of God goes into operation to get the job done. So faith is action. And when God sees you and me acting our faith, doing something with our faith, that's when the power of God goes in and says, I will heal, I will deliver, I will set you free, I will do something that you believe, are believing God for. Amen. Four simple insights. First, faith gets the attention of God. Second, forgiveness paves the way to receiving your miracle. Third, the same Jesus who forgives also heals. The same Jesus who forgives also works miracles. And fourth, faith is action. Then you put your faith into action. God's power goes into operation to close the, to get the job done. So today, we're going to do the same thing. Right here, and those of you who are watching, you're going to do the same thing wherever you are. We're going to expect Jesus to work miracles. Jesus is here. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's your miracle worker. He's the one who forgives you your sin. He's the one who heals you. Worship team, come please. We're going to sing, I'm the God who heals you. Oh, he's the same God who does those things today. And so right here in this auditorium, if you need healing in your body, if you need deliverance in a, from any bondage, from any addiction, from any torment, from any oppression, if you need God to work a miracle in your life, whether it's in your business, your finances, your family situation, look, he does everything. To fix our lives. He's a miracle worker. I may not know exactly the situation that you are in. But Jesus is a miracle worker. And if we come to him this morning the same way that these five friends came to Jesus. They came with faith. Expectant and determined faith. They received forgiveness. This young man, he received forgiveness. So you and I have the opportunity this morning. We will begin with that. I will lead us in a simple prayer to receive forgiveness from Jesus Christ. Because forgiveness paves the way for every miracle. And then, look to Jesus. The same Jesus who forgives is also the miracle worker. The same Jesus who forgives is also the healer. And whatever your condition is, and I'm not exaggerating, because you can never exaggerate the power of God. When I say whatever, it means whatever. Anything. Everything. Jesus Christ heals. Jesus Christ breaks bondages. Jesus Christ makes whole. And so whatever the condition is, whatever the situation is, we can look to him for the healing or for the miracle or for the deliverance. It's the enemy. It's Satan who does the evil work. The devil is a bad devil. God is a good God. Simple statement. Bible theology. The devil is a bad devil. Bad things come from the devil. God is a good God. Good things come from God. Plain and simple. So resist the sickness. Resist the disease. Sometimes we will have to deal with some demonic spirits that are behind the problem. That are causing the torment. That are causing the oppression. So when I pray today. From here, I will speak to evil spirits. I will speak to those things. Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out devils or demons or evil spirits. They will cast them out. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will get healed. Jesus made that statement. It is truth. And so today when we pray, we will practice that. I may not be able to lay hands on you physically. That doesn't matter. It's not the hand that heals. It's Jesus who heals. And as you look 
to him today, wherever you are, right here inside the auditorium or watching online, as you look to Jesus, he will heal, he will deliver. We're just going to pray in his name. We're going to take authority over sickness and disease in his name. We're going to take authority over evil spirits in his name. We're going to take authority over tormenting, oppressing spirits, spirits that hold people in bondage in his name. And in his name, miracles will take place. He's not here physically, but he left us his name. And he said, in my name, I am there. He's not here physically, but his spirit is here. God, Holy Spirit is here. And he's flowing, he's moving. Right here in this auditorium and through the internet, wherever you are, wherever you're watching. God, Holy Spirit is there to touch you. The same spirit who raised up Jesus from the dead touches our mortal bodies. Is there any part of your body God can't touch? Is there any part of your body God can't fix? Nothing. Every cell in your body is subject to the power of the Holy Spirit. And He will do it. So come in faith because faith gets the attention of God. Receive forgiveness because forgiveness paves the way for every work of God in our lives. Look to Jesus because the same Jesus who forgives is also the Jesus who heals and works miracles. Put your faith into action. Do what you could not do. There's some way that you cannot, there's something that you could not do. Put your faith into action. Some healings will have to be verified by the doctor. So go do a medical checkup, talk to the doctor, let them verify it. No problem. In fact, we encourage you to do that in order to verify what God has done in your life, in your body. Do that. In your life situation, when you need something turned around, just do what you know you should be doing in that situation. That's your faith in action. And God will respond to your faith in action. Let's rise to our feet, please. This is a sacred moment. It's a moment when we turn our eyes to Jesus. When we turn our eyes to the Lord who gave us His promise. He said, I am the God who heals you. And as we sing with the worship team, it's our heart saying, God, I believe. You are, you are the God who heals me. You've sent your word right now. God's word has come to us. And in this place, healings, miracles will take, take place. Those watching online, right where you are, as you sing with the team, expect the God who has sent his word to heal, to work miracles, to deliver. Let's just worship for a few moments. I am the God that he loved thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I send my word and I heal your disease. I am the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. 
You sent your word and you heal my disease. You are the Lord, my Forgiveness, receiving forgiveness opens the door for God's healing and God's miracles. Son, your sins are forgiven. So I want us to lead us first in a prayer to receive forgiveness for our sins. So if there's anyone here inside this auditorium, anyone watching online, and you're not sure that your sins are forgiven, if there is shame, guilt, condemnation, you're not sure. The Bible's message is very clear. That Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross. He was buried and he rose up again. He's alive today. And anyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. So all we have to do is to believe. You have to go to Jesus and say, Lord, I believe you died for my sins. Forgive my sins. Wash me with your blood. So if you've never done that, I want to lead us in a simple prayer. It's not about the prayer, but it's about you asking Jesus to forgive you your sins. Son, your sins are forgiven. So just pray and say, Lord, I believe that because of your sacrifice on the cross, my sins are forgiven. I'm clean. I'm washed in your blood. Just say this with me, Lord Jesus. I believe you died for me. For my sins. You paid for it all. I believe you died and you rose again. Wash me with your precious blood. Cleanse me. Make me clean. I receive forgiveness for my sins. I receive you as my Savior. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer for the very first time, if there's anyone in the auditorium, you pray the prayer for the very first time, just to believe Jesus to forgive you your sins, then just raise your hand up so we, we know that you did that. Anyone here inside the auditorium? I see one hand. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? You pray that with me for the very first time in your life. God bless you. God bless you. If you're watching online and you do that for the first time, and if you don't mind, you can just type your name in the chat or whatever it is and just say, I did it. You know, people around you are watching will celebrate just like here. To know that the blood of Jesus Christ forgives us, cleanses us, is such a beautiful thing. You are forgiven. There's nothing that's stopping you from receiving your miracle. Son, your sins are forgiven. So now we're going to pray for healing, for miracles in our lives. Jesus who forgives is also the Jesus who heals, is also the Jesus who works miracles. We're going to pray first of all for healing in our bodies, for deliverance in our minds. Some of us could be oppressed emotionally, mentally, tormented with fear. All kinds of things that torment the minds of people. So we're going to pray for healing in our bodies. We're going to pray for healing of the mind, the emotions. See, Jesus said, Lay hands on the sick, they will be made whole. He heals, Jesus heals in many different ways. One of the ways is to lay hands. But what we're going to do now, it's going, I'm going to ask you to lay your hand on your own body. Or if you're with a family member and you know one of your family members needs healing, you lay hands on your family member or hold, hold hands, whatever you're comfortable doing. 
You can lay hand on your own body or hold the hand of your family member, whoever needs. Lay hands, touch. And same thing at home. Do that. And we will pray from here. Now, because some conditions are caused by evil spirits, I will rebuke evil spirits. So don't get scared or anything. We're just telling the devil to go. We're just destroying the works of the devil with the authority of Jesus' name. Sometimes you may feel something happen. You may feel something leave you. You may feel the spirit of depression go off of you. You may feel a spirit of fear or torment leave you. That's okay. Just relax. God is doing his work. Sometimes you may not feel anything happen. That's okay. God is still at work. But as we pray, we're going to pray for healing, pray for deliverance. I want you to expect, faith expects, be determined to receive. So Lord, today is my day. This is my moment. I'm going to have it. And faith also acts. So try to do something that you couldn't do. Try to do something. Now, sometimes you may need to go home and try to do that. That's fine. But if you can do it in the auditorium, if you can do it right now, try to do it. Move your feet or hand or whatever. Like this man on the bed, when Jesus said, rise, take up my bed, he had to do something. So you try to check your body. And then I'm going to ask you after the time of prayer, as you check your body, if you see something happening right here, right now, to wave your hand so we know that right here right now this instant Jesus has healed Jesus has delivered and those watching online you can type it in the chat once you check your body and a miracle takes place now some you may need to go do a test you may need the doctor to examine you, that's okay just go do it but we are believing God and after we pray that we're going to pray for circumstances life situations for God to intervene Jesus intervenes in our life situation. So we're going to pray for that after we pray for healing and deliverance. Is that all right? So let's pray. I want everyone to just pray. You want, you want to pray in tongues, pray in tongues. You want to pray, however you want to pray, pray. But as I lead in prayer, I want you to just agree, agree with me. Let's be in agreement as believers in Jesus Christ. Jesus, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you. You are mighty. You are powerful. Your name is great. It's greater than every other. And you have told us, go heal the sick. Cast out devils. Cast out evil spirits. Heal the sick. And so we stand here today to do what you've commissioned us as your people to do. So lay your hand on your body right now. In the name of Jesus. I take authority over every sickness and disease. Satan, I take authority over you. I take authority over every spirit of infirmity. I take authority over every unclean and foul spirit. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every demonic, every oppressive, every tormenting spirit. In the name of Jesus, I declare every work of Satan broken. And I command every foul and clean spirit to leave. Every spirit of infirmity leave in the name of Jesus. Every tormenting, oppressive spirit leave in the name of Jesus. right now in Jesus name be healed be healed be made whole be set free from your chronic conditions from pain from chronic disease chronic ailments be free in the name of Jesus diabetic conditions I command you be made whole arthritic conditions I command you be free from it Oppression and torment of the mind. I command you to be free from it. In the name of Jesus, be made whole. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet.
And right now begin to do, do something, act your faith. If you've been having pain in your knees, begin to move your knees, begin to do something. If you've been bedridden, try to move, try to do something you could not do. In the name of Jesus, I command the healing power of God to go through the nerves, to restore nerves that have been damaged or uh, that are just inoperative now. Life come in because the spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Let the life of God flow through every cell in your body and be made whole in the name of Jesus. If you've had a stroke and you couldn't move, some part of your body has been impaired, expect healing, expect that part of your body to be restored right now. In the name of Jesus, I reverse the effects of the stroke. Let the effects of the stroke be reversed and let there be restoration taking place in your body in the name of the Lord Jesus because nothing is impossible for our God I speak to bones that have been damaged even in your word to pray the bones the discs that have been damaged or dislocated be healed and there be a supernatural healing in your word to bring your back let there be supernatural healing in your back and let the bones be healed in the name of Jesus. Things that are dislocated go into their place in the name of Jesus. Let healing take place right now. Right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody's praying for their eyes. Let your eyesight be restored, normal. Be restored in the name of Jesus because according to your faith, it is done for you. There's nothing impossible with Jesus. Receive it now. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to sing now, I believe. And during that time, just put your faith into action. Just act to check your body. I'm going to ask after that. We just want to see what the Lord has done right here inside the auditorium. Those of you watching live, you're, you can type your miracle right there. Those who are watching will be able to see that. So, 
has the lord done anything here that you can you say like this happened to me right now while we were praying i know there's a healing taking place in my body something has changed the lord has touched me healed me just raise your hand up if you know something has taken place right now if you need to go and get it checked by the doctor then please do that that's perfectly fine but if you can say something happened right here right now while we were praying just raise your hand let's see anyone here inside the auditorium something happened right here right now don't be ashamed just raise your hand i see one hand god bless you anyone else anyone else i just raise your hand anybody else okay all right let's just thank the lord at least one person right here right now father we thank you for what the, what you've done we thank you lord jesus we thank you we bless you we honor you we thank you all right what i wanted you to do you prayed today here yeah. go get yourself checked or sometimes you go home and you check yourself and share your testimony right yeah, you're welcome to send an email to testimony at apcw.org so we can share that when we try to be uh, we try to keep your name or other details confidential to whatever extent you want us to share we will share it uh, so that we can celebrate what god has done the same thing for those of you online what God has touched you in your home, share that. Uh, of course, check your miracle. Check it out. Give it time. But once you know God has done something, then share your testimony so we can share it with others as well. I want to pray. We're going to pray now for life situations to change. Sometimes the miracle we need may not be in our body, may not be in our mind. It may be in a life situation. Maybe a job, a financial problem, a mountain of debt that needs to be cleared uh, maybe property matters real estate matters lots of challenges that people face in everyday life but God is mindful of those things as well and he can intervene he can turn things around what's impossible with man God can do it he can intervene in our real life situations that's why he's God he can turn things around but we must expect him we must ask him Jesus said you can ask anything in my name I'll do it so we want to pray for life situations and God knows what each one of us are going through what is in our heart that we are praying about while I pray you lift up your situation to the father in the name of Jesus you say father this is my situation this is what I want to happen in my life intervene in this situation Lord only you can do it but the beautiful thing is this. God is the God who turns our morning into dancing. He turns our night into day. He turns our, he gives beauty for ashes. Right now, situation may look like it's, it's, it's gone. It's ashes. Nothing more to see. God can bring something beautiful out of it. That's our God. That's why we look to him. Nothing is impossible. He makes the barren mother be a barren woman become a joyful mother of children barrenness is not a problem for God he can make the womb fruitful he makes the barren woman a joyful mother God can turn things around let's pray father we thank you that nothing is impossible you can turn things around you can cause barrenness to become fruitful God you can cause the desert to rejoice and blossom like the rose and so father we pray for life situations different situations that each one of people that people find themselves in court cases that have been drawn long drawn Lord intervene and we ask for our early settlement property matters that have been long drawn we ask for your intervention and a quick settlement in the name of Jesus father we ask Lord for financial problems people who have been in financial problems a long time for years been in debt today we speak provision of God that cancels debt that he takes you out of debt into plenty he takes you out of debt into his abundance the debt will be a thing of the past in your life. Today the line is drawn and God causes you to cross over. Lord, release people from their debt supernaturally, God. 
bring in that provision and let them see things change so that they live totally debt free live in abundance father intervene in life situations in business situations god where things are stuck there seems to be no resolution no way out today intervene in business situations in those circumstances they will know that things are beginning to change there are signs of change coming there are things that begin to move in those situations that seem to have been stuck for a long time because of your intervention father today thank you for that thank you for that thank you for that thank you for that for family disputes for those of you who are who are just in in, in a bitter family dispute it's sad but it's real Lord, today, let there be a change in the minds of people. Today, let the minds of people change and let them come and sit at the table of peace. Because of your intervention, Father God, that disputes will be changed and there will be peace coming there in those situations and a peaceful resolution. We thank you, Father God. So intervene. You're the God who turned water to wine. You're the God who turned a catch of nothing into a catch of abundance. You're the God who multiplied a jar of oil to cancel debt. You're the God who multiplied the last meal to carry a family and a prophet through famine. You're the God who brought water of a rock, who provided manna from heaven. And you're still the God who works miracles. So do it in the lives of your people. Father, for those who lived in short supply till today, let the river of your provision flow into their lives. Today that ends and they will be blessed with enough and more than enough according to your word, Father. I mean, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your interventions. Thank you for your interventions. Thank you for moving on the behalf of your people. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Once again, when you see God work these things out in your life situation, send a testimony. Tell people, this is what the Lord has done. Amen. That's our God. He's the miracle worker. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He's faithful to you in your life situation. Amen. We're going to close. We're going to celebrate God together we can just celebrate him and close celebrate give thanks to the Lord so Joshua do you have a jumpy song <laughs> okay. all right I'll pronounce a benediction and then they'll make us jump amen <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God our Heavenly Father and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with each of us always in Jesus' name. Amen.